Happy draft day, Colts fans. Let's top off this wonderful season with one final mock draft. Let's get to it. You are locked on Colts, your daily Indianapolis Colts podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you all for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. This is your daily podcast covering your Indianapolis Colts, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. I admit it. I have a competitive side and is a big fan of Monopoly Go, the mobile hit twist on the classic Monopoly. Uh, so join your friends and download Monopoly Go now on the App Store or Google Play. Hello, everyone. My name is Zach Hicks. You guys can find my film work over at HorseshoeHuddle.com. And if you guys are also checking HorseshoeHuddle.com this morning, you can find my brand spanking new mock draft. My final mock draft of the season. Uh, I, do, I like to be predictive with my final mock draft, so it's not what I would personally do uh, but it's what I think the Colts will end up doing come draft day which is today so we like to release mine on the day of the draft just so again I'm the one that's held up to that standard of the actual draft more so than everyone else but yeah you guys can read my mock draft there and see what my final predictions are uh, for the Colts uh, starting tonight and obviously going into uh, Saturday afternoon as well uh, for all of you guys though who love to listen to it in podcast form I'm going to go through my final mock draft my final mock draft today on this episode I'm going to give you my detailed explanations for each pick why I ultimately went that route with for the Colts and also why I think that player fits the Colts and how that player will ultimately fit the team and again, why I also had the player falling to that spot in a couple scenarios as well. Uh, so kicking this off with round one, and again, I, I said falling to that spot because the player I have the Colts selecting in round one is a little bit of a faller. Uh, and I know this is a pick where we've all been dreaming of it all, all draft season. We've all been saying, look, if this guy falls to the Colts at 15, the Colts better turn in the card because he's a perfect fit. Uh, and that is tight end Brock Bowers from Georgia. In my mock draft, I had him falling to pick 15 and the Indianapolis Colts making that selection there. Now, again, there's a lot of speculation come draft season. You know, will the Colts move up for a wide receiver? Will they move up for Bowers in this draft class? You know, if they want to secure the top tight end in the draft, do they have to move up and get him? And I do think those are realistic possibilities. You know, we could see the Colts move up in round one to secure the guy that they want, and Bowers could be that guy. Uh, but ultimately, when I look at what's going to happen or what I think is going to happen on draft night, I think Bowers could be there at 15. You know, to kind of quote what Chris Ballard said in that with the next pick uh, series that they just dropped uh, recently on, on their YouTube, uh, he was talking about a player. I don't know which player in particular it was, but he said at the very end of the video, it's like, hey, I think this guy could be there at 15. And for me personally... I think that that sounded like Brock Bowers to me, a player who fits a lot of what this team needs, fits a lot of what this offense needs, and also a player who really could be there at 15. When we're looking at the, the teams that are going to be competitive in potentially selecting Brock Bowers in front of the Colts, we're looking, I think, mostly at the Jets and the Broncos. Uh, those are the two teams that really pop out to me as like, okay, these two teams could go Brock Bowers, the Jets at number 10 and the Broncos at number 12. Uh, for the Jets, I, I think there's a realistic chance that one of the top three receivers falls to them and they end up going with that top three receiver. I also think they're going to be in the offensive tackle market. You know, they could take a JC Latham there. They could take a Talis Fuega there. I, I think those are very realistic options for them to where I'm not confident saying like 100% Bowers is off the board with that Jets pick. Then we get to the Broncos and the Broncos are in a, in a weird situation where they kind of need everything on that roster right now. So we could see a trade back right there. I think I've seen some smoke about Philadelphia coming up to 12 for a tackle or, or coming up for, you know, a, a defensive playmaker. It could be anything like that. And I've heard the Broncos could be interested in a pass rusher. They could be interested in a numerous amount of players because again, this is a team that needs everything. So when you're looking at the two biggest threats to selecting Brock Bowers in front of the Colts and neither of them are really locks to take him, I do think there's a realistic chance that Bowers falls to the Colts at 15. Now, again, there, there exists a scenario where the Colts have to move up to like 13 or maybe even 12 uh, even to go get him. But I do think there's a chance he's there. And, and we're talking about fit. I mean, this is the perfect fit in this draft for the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, Shane Steichen runs a very RPO-centric styled offense. 
And Brock Bowers was one of the best players in college football after the catch and on those short RPO type plays. Uh, we saw Georgia, a lot of what they would do is they would do these counter plays out of the gun. And on the backside of the counter, they would have Bowers break off into the flat and kind of build those RPO stuff for him. Uh, we can perfectly envision something like that in this Colts offense next season if Bowers were the pick. Uh, another thing to really make note of with this type of pick is Shane Steichen has always had a tight end in his career besides last year, obviously he's had a tight end in his career, like just have a ton of targets. I think he's had 60 plus receptions from one tight end in his room every single year that he's been a play caller, except for last year with the Colts uh, where his leading tight end had like half of those catches. Uh, so he likes to feed the ball to the tight end position. Uh, Dallas Goddard in Philadelphia, Hunter Henry with the chargers. I mean, he, he has a history of doing this. So when you look at this Colts offense, you know, you could you could say like, hey, we have our number one wide receiver, Michael Pittman Jr. We have our vertical threat in Alec Pierce. We have our quick win slot guy in Josh Downs. What are we missing? We are missing that ball dominant tight end. We're missing that guy who can win at all three levels over the middle of the field. A guy who can, you know, get to his landmarks and create after the catch. Brock Bowers had 18 missed tackles forced after the catch last year. Uh, so it's just a guy who can do all those things for your offense. And that's what Bowers can do. That's what Bowers can bring to this offense. He can bring that Dallas Goddard level impact in a, in a very different way, obviously, but that Dallas Goddard level impact to this Colts offense and make life easier for Anthony Richardson at quarterback. And then again, you can just dream about the scenarios where defenses have to see Brock Bowers in motion at the snap on those split flow type plays. And they have to make the decision of, okay, are we crashing down against Jonathan Taylor? Are we sitting back to play Anthony Rich in the run game? Or am I drifting to Brock Bowers in the potential RPO game? There's just so many ways that you can pinch a defense with Brock Bowers as your tight end to where I think this fit is just phenomenal with the Colts. So again, I know we've talked about it all draft season. We have had multiple shows on this podcast talking about Brock Bowers in Indianapolis in particular. But I think it's a realistic possibility. I'm not going to say it's 100%. I'm not going to sit here and proclaim that Brock Bowers is a lock to the Colts, especially at 15 when so many different things can happen. Uh, but in my final mock draft, I ultimately had Bowers falling to the Colts there at 15 and the Colts making that selection. It's, it's a very similar situation to me as the Malik Hooker one uh, back in 2017 where a potential top 10 talent falls to the middle of the first round because of an injury that limited his testing and also due to positional value of a safety slash tight end not being valued as high anymore. Uh, and Chris Ballard swoops that player up there. So Brock Bowers to the Colts in round one of my final mock draft of the season. But coming up, guys, don't worry. We have day two on tap. Day two is going to be a blast. And I got a couple of picks along with a trade back here on day two. So stick here for day two coming up here in just a second. Okay, guys. Yes, I will admit I have a competitive side. We all do. And my competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist on Monopoly where you play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities that bring you the big money. But the best part is messing with my friends. I can change. I can charge them rent on my iconic properties, just like classic Monopoly. But now I can also heist their vaults of riches for myself. I mean, look, I'm trying to get my wife to play this with me. We're, we're having a blast on this game and I'm just robbing her silly on here. It's been a blast so far. And the leaderboard show me who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is, which I'm hoping can be me here soon. We'll see. I'm, I'm still working my way up the leaderboards as we speak. But it's not just my competitive side that loves it. You can also team up with friends and people all around the world in time tournaments to earn huge rewards. So get in the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or Google Play. And guys, it's playoff time in the NBA and the NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every single game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 bucks, win or lose. And if you guys are like me and you're a big fan of the Washington Capitals, it's a lot of lose. It's a lot of lose right now. So I need those 150 bucks. This has been great so far. And, and look, the Pacers are turning things around. So maybe, just maybe, I can turn things around as well. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, 
all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All righty, Colts fans, we are now on day two of my final predictive mock draft for the Indianapolis Colts. And of course, I had to start off day two with a trade back. So before we get into the actual picks, I do want to give my reasoning for trading back in this. Uh, Chris Ballard has averaged roughly nine draft picks per season uh, the, since 2020 with the Indianapolis Colts, 36 picks. Since 2020, that's you know nine per season exactly there. Uh, he likes to do a lot of maneuvering on draft day, so I tried to predict a little bit of that maneuvering here, and I really wanted to get to that number nine in this class. Again, he could end this day with 10, 11, 12. He could end it with 5, 6, 7. Like, I'm not exactly sure how he's going to finish uh, this draft class, but I wanted to get to that average number of nine just to – Again, get to where the average is for the Colts. So that's my reasoning for trading back. Uh, my first pick here on day two still happened in round two. I didn't go too far back, guys. Uh, but I traded back to pick 51 with the Pittsburgh Steelers and got a fourth rounder in return, which will be on the day three section of this mock draft as well. Uh, but for the day two selection here at pick 51, I went with safety Jaden Hicks from Washington State. Uh, I, not only is this guy have an amazing last name, but he's a fantastic player to watch on film. And when you when you look at the Colts draft history of safety, I know it's not this perfect run of luck. You know, they don't have this this fantastic track record under Chris Ballard at drafting safeties. But one thing they do like to do at that position is draft athletic upside that is young. They like young players at that safety position. Malik Hooker, Nick Cross, Julian Blackman, all very, very young players on draft night. Jaden Hicks, only a redshirt sophomore who just turned 21, uh, just played some really great football there at Washington State. Has cornerback background, can play some single high safety, uh, can play down the box, really great tackler as well. Uh, so when you look at what the Colts are trying to do on defense, especially going into this next season, they want to be a little bit more too high than the typical Gus Bradley type. And again, they're going to play more cover three than anybody else in the league, uh, but they do want to go a little bit more cover four and, and too high type looks. So Jaden Hicks gives you this guy who can succeed in those two high looks who can succeed in quarters coverage uh the, those extra looks that the Colts want to wrinkle in, but also he can play in that single high type system as well and play over the top. And I think the value in having a player like Jaden Hicks alongside Julian Blackman is you have two guys that can play in the box and over the top. You have interchangeable safeties. You know, we're not talking about a guy where like Ronnie Thomas last year where it's like, we can't have this guy in the box because he's not a great tackler. Like he has to be the deep safety, which limits what you're showing pre-snap. Pre-snap, you're always showing the same exact looks. Ronnie Thomas deep, Julian Blackman in the box. That's what you're showing. When you have a guy like Jaden Hicks and Julian Blackman, you can be as interchangeable and diverse before the snap as you want. I mean, you could even have looks where, you know, you're having Jaden Hicks come down and play slot corner for a snap and having Kenny Moore switch back to play safety just to really add some spice to what you're doing on defense. Uh, so I think Jaden Hicks adds some versatility, adds some upside, adds another young player at a position where they're still trying to find the long-term answer at. And I think he adds great competition to what they already have in Nick Cross and Julian Blackman. So, Pick 51 might be a little bit rich for him, but overall, I really like the fit. I like the size. I like the athletic profile. I like uh, the demeanor that he shows on film. Very physical player. Uh, really, really good fit here, I think, for the Colts. So Jane Hicks there at pick 51 uh, for the Colts. Uh, big, big fan of his game. One of, one of the few safeties in this class I really like. And again, if the Colts go, go safety at all in the draft, they like to go young. Jane Hicks just turned 21, playing some really good football. Uh, I really like that fit with this Colts defense. My next pick here in round three might feel a little bit like a reach as well. So again, I'm excited to see your guys' comment section here, uh, especially considering that I'm going offensive line in round three. And that's with Wisconsin center Tanner Bordellini. Uh, this is a player where he's been commonly mocked in round four, round five. Um, and I think there is a chance that he could be there in round four, but I don't know. Something about this player tells me the Colts are going to like him pretty high, and I'll, I'll go into some detail with that here in a second. Uh, but just looking at the Colts' offensive line situation going into next year, 2024, they're set. Ryan Kelly is back. Will Fries is back. Obviously, the tackles are back. Quentin Nelson will be here forever. Uh, so they're good for 2024. But going into 2025, they have Ryan Kelly and Will Fries set to hit free agency. 
I don't think they're going to bring back both guys, although I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't doubt it with Chris Ballard. We could definitely see him bring back both, but I don't think they're going to bring back both of those guys. I think there's going to be either or, or they both walk. So the Colts are going to need a, need some some young depth behind those guys, some young guys that they can groom into being the starters down the line. And Bordellini really stands out to me because, one, he's a great pass protector, great pass protector on film. And the number one thing that Chris Ballard talked about in his press conference the other day was the need to protect Anthony Richardson. So Bordellini is a guy who's going to be a really strong pass protector from day one. And also, he's got the athletic upside. I mean, we're talking about historical tester here at the combine did a lot of great things with his testing. You can see that that athleticism on film, especially on, on poles and, and plays that he can get out in space. So you see that stuff there. Another player who's really young. Again, if you want this team to keep getting younger, all the players I'm taking right now are like 20 or just turned 21. I think Bordellini just turned 21 as well. I believe he was a red shirt sophomore or uh, a junior that declared early for the draft as well. Uh, but yeah, Bordellini, I think, just fits so many things the Colts are looking for. He can play guard or center. Uh, he can back up both those positions for this next year. He can get a little better in the run game while he's sitting on the bench. Uh, but he already brings the high IQ. He brings the pass protecting. He brings the athleticism. And he's from Chris Ballard's alma mater at Wisconsin there. So you know he loves himself some Wisconsin boys. I mean, he's brought in multiple undrafted free agents from Wisconsin over the years. He obviously drafted Jonathan Taylor. So he does love those Wisconsin boys. So yeah, I think Bordellini is just a guy who makes so much sense. Like again, maybe it's a bit of a reach here in, in round three. Maybe they can trade back in round three and get him, or maybe they can get him with their first pick in round four. Uh, but I don't think you want to take the chance. I mean, again, a really, really young prospect, super athletic, great in pass protection, and has the upside in the run game. And, and I think he's going to be a guy that not only Chris Ballard's a fan of, I think Tony Sperano Jr. is going to be a fan of him. I think uh, just overall this entire offense is going to be a fan of what he could bring to the team. And it makes that decision on Ryan Kelly easier going into next season, where it's like, hey, we have this 21-year-old that we are grooming to take that center spot going into 2025. So we don't need to feel the need to bring back Ryan Kelly at age 33 or whatever it's going to be uh, to be the starter again, because we have this guy who's ready for that role. It doesn't have to be Ryan Kelly versus Wesley French. You know, it can be Bordellini who we drafted to do this uh, instead of, again, that decision I just mentioned. So I liked Tanner Bordellini. Uh, I think in the draft guide, we actually had a fifth on him, but I personally had an early four on him. It was just on recheck. Some of the other guys dropped him a little bit lower. Uh, but yeah, I, I think this is a perfectly fine spot for Tanner Bordellini. And I think he's got the potential to be a starter in the NFL. So Jaden Hicks and Tanner Bordellini here on day two in my predictive Colts mock draft. Coming up, we have a pretty loaded day three. So I'm going to have to rifle through a lot of these guys uh, pretty quick. We have six picks coming up on day three slash another trade back as well. So uh, buckle up, guys. We still have day three on this predictive mock draft to go. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals that you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users uh, aren't or don't visit other land leading job sites. So if you are not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking at the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 20 four hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. I've been involved with the hiring process on both sides of it in my career, guys, and it is a blast going on LinkedIn. I mean, LinkedIn just makes things so much easier. It's a great way to connect, great way to find people that you are looking for, especially for smaller type businesses as well. Uh, LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier too. They even launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. Alrighty, Colts fans. Again, last mock draft of the season. You guys get your fix in before the real thing later tonight and obviously going into the next couple of days, but I got day three for you here on my final predictive mock. And, and look, this day three 
is going to be for the psychos. It's going to be for the people who listen to this show, <laughs> because I know all you guys uh, love just these day three small school type guys and just just names that are kind of you know, hiding between the cracks there. So I have a couple big names here on day three. Don't get me wrong. But for the most part, you know, it's a lot of guys where like, look, you got to be following the draft pretty crazy to know who I'm talking about. But I'll give you my best breakdown of each pick here. Uh, the first pick in the, with the first fourth round pick that the Colts have, uh, I went with wide receiver Jalen McMillan from Washington. Obviously, this is one of the bigger names here I have here on day three. Now, McMillan could easily get his name called uh, anywhere from early round three to round five in this class that's a very very deep wide receiver class and he could be a name that either propels to the top of that fourth tier or falls to the back of it and is available here in round four for the colts so in this mock draft i had him available in round four again this could he could go anywhere from round three to round five but a little bit of a slender type receiver not super fast but fast enough uh, but he's a guy who showcased the ability to win down the field in college, uh, who could win after the catch on on screens and underneath passes. And when I look at what the Colts need from their depth wide receiver uh, position, I think a guy like McMillan makes a lot of sense. He's a guy who can win at multiple positions, a guy who's produced in college, had over 1,000 yards in 2022, uh, and can do a lot of good things for your offense. So McMillan is a guy I went with here early day three to shore up that wide receiver depth. And, and look, who knows? Maybe down the line he shows that he's more capable of being a starter than an Alec Pierce type. Uh, I'm not going to rule that out because I think McMillan has starting potential down the line. So I think this is a perfect day three type selection for the Colts. And and when you look at what they do with their early day three selections, they like to find guys with that starter potential. Uh, we're looking at last year, Blake Freeland and Adetomi Adebore. Those are two guys they have sky high hopes for being, you know, starters down the line. Uh, you go back to even the Kari Willis pick years ago. Uh, that was the guy they wanted to get out there from day one. And, and it ended up being very good for them for the time that he played. So McMillan, I think, fits into that similar type of mold for the Colts. With our next pick, though, we're going pure project and we're going pure Chris Ballard uh, love and adoration with this next one. And that is Jalex Hunt, edge rusher from Houston Christian. And this is with that Steelers pick. So this is the second fourth rounder I picked up from the Steelers. I believe it was pick one, 119. Uh, in my mock draft, you guys can obviously pull it up on horseshoehuddle.com if you are having any questions about where I am in the mock right now. Uh, but Jalex Hunt from uh, the Steelers pick uh, from Houston Christian, uh, really good edge rusher, really long arms, uh, former safety at Cornell, transferred to Houston Christian and moved into some like hybrid linebacker, like you know, edge rusher type role last year, had nine sacks at Houston Christian, uh, moved over to the senior bowl. This offseason season had a good senior bowl, had a great combine. He's just winning the off season, doing a lot of great things. And again, when we're looking at what small schoolers, Chris Ballard has, has valued in the past, he likes those guys that change positions. He likes those guys that move around on the defense or the offense or wherever he's drafting and can wear multiple hats for a team. So when you're looking at a guy like Jalex Hunt, you could develop him as a pass rusher. You could, you know, play the really long game and try to develop him as an off-ball linebacker as well. I think that the the sky's the limit for him in either spot. And also, he gives you that special teams upside. He can be a guy who can run down on punts. Uh, he had a block kick last year at Houston Christian. So, Jalex Hunt, a very, very Chris Ballard guy here on day three, who I went with in the second pick of the round of round four uh, here on day three. My first pick in round five, I did trade back with this one here. Again, trying to get to that magic number of nine picks. Uh, so I traded back with the Eagles for their late fifth round pick and with their later sixth round pick as well. So moved back in the fifth round, picked up another six, just again, to get to that nine pick um, thing that I wanted to get to. So with this pick here in round five, I went with cornerback MJ Devonshire uh, from Pittsburgh, a really good man coverage corner, long arm guy. Uh, I think he had like the 32 inch arms that we're looking for for Colts cornerbacks. Uh, and this is a guy who lived on an island in college. If you guys know anything about Pittsburgh's past defense uh, at the college level, they like to blitz the heck out of teams. They are blitzing nonstop all game long. It reminds me of those early Bud Foster days at Virginia Tech where they were blitzing, 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 and those corners were just surviving on an island. That was your goal, was just survive on an island. And Devin Shire is one of those guys where, look, it's sink or swim on that island out there. You're going to be by yourself 
because your team is blitzing in front of you and you have to know how to survive out there. And he did some great things. I, I think the testing numbers are really good. I think uh, you see the competitiveness when the ball is in the air. You see the playmaking ability and multiple pick sixes in his college career. This is the type of guy where I'm very comfortable taking a shot on day three to develop those traits. And and look, again, at the worst case scenario, you have a really good gunner. Uh, so MJ Devonshire is a guy who I think the Colts are going to be a fan of there on day three. And, and I really like his fit with this Colts defense and, and just this fit in that Colts quarterback room. Maybe has some nickel upside as well to, to be a backup to Kenny Moore uh, this next season. So MJ Devon, Devonshire there in round five uh, gives the Colts an athletic corner to develop. My next pick here, early round six, the Colts' uh, next selection here, Kamani Vidal, running back from Troy. I wanted to get a running back in this draft. Uh, I was, you know, I was going back and forth between a couple guys. I like Blake Watson, obviously from from uh, Memphis as well. But Kamani Vidal, to me, closely resembles what Zach Moss brought this team last year as that backup bell cow running back, a guy who is a very tough and physical runner just excelling on those those zone runs from the gun uh, can get those tough yards and just be a consistent four or five yards per carry type guy. Uh, very effective player. Doesn't really have the home run speed that you're looking for, but again, you don't really need that in this team. You just need a guy who can move the chains. It can get those tough yards. Had a lot of more missed tackles for us last year for Troy. Uh, has a lot of tread on the tires because he's just been carrying that Troy offense the last couple of years. One of the best pass blocking backs I've seen in the last couple of draft cycles. Uh, Kamani Vidal, to me, is a fantastic fit for this Colts offense. He, you know, I was talking with my guy Colts film room there on Twitter earlier. And I told him that this, he reminds me a lot of like how old Frank Gore ran in this Colts offense. And he brought the comp, the comp to CJ Anderson, uh, which I thought was a really good one. Had the way that he runs like a CJ Anderson type. So Kamani Vidal is a guy to watch here on day three. I'm a really, really big fan of him. And I think he's going to be, he would be a fantastic fit in what the Colts offense is looking for from the running back position. Two more selections here, and then I'll let you guys go. I got Tylen Grable. Uh, offensive tackle from UCF. Again, get another big athletic offensive tackle in here for the Colts. This is with that that second Eagles pick that I picked up. Uh, Grable was a former high school quarterback, actually. He went to Jacksonville State out of college or out of high school, uh, transitioned to tight end for that team, and then over time eventually transitioned to offensive tackle. And he's been offensive tackle the last three years. Fantastic testing numbers. I believe he ran under a five second 40 for a guy who's over 300 pounds. That's absolutely insane. Uh, so yeah, this just adds another athlete to the offensive tackle room to fight and develop with guys like Jake Witt and Blake Freeland and, you know, may the best man win in that group there. And then I got one more small schooler for us as well. Willie Drew, cornerback from Virginia State, uh, originally a James Madison uh, commit. So again, all you Dukes out there like me, you know, it's pretty cool. Willie Drew uh, was originally going to be at JMU, has suffered a major, major knee injury, uh, had to go down to Virginia State, and it took him a couple years to get up to speed and then eventually hit that potential that he was going to show at JMU. Uh, was one of the best overall players at the D2 level the last couple seasons. Went up to the Senior Bowl, had a really good competitive week. So uh, we're going to end here on a Senior Bowl corner from a small school uh, who had really good testing numbers as well. Just feels very Chris Ballard, doesn't it? Uh, so Willie Drew, just add another cornerback to the Colts room. And again, it's just another one of the situations where we're going to get all these guys in here, all these young players, and may the best man win. If they end up cutting a Willie Drew type to make room for a Devonshire or an undrafted free agent, so be it. May the best man win in that Colts cornerback room. If you're going to go young, go young and just keep adding bodies to that room. But that is my final mock draft of the year. Again, you guys can find the whole thing on horseshoehuddle.com. Uh, just obviously find uh, the, the, the top thing that that's on there because the final mock draft there. And guys, I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for all of the listens throughout this draft season. It's been a hectic time. It's been a blast at the same time. And you guys have been great as a community uh, throughout this entire process. We're going to bring you some next level coverage here of the Colts draft selections after they happen. And obviously our reactions and what we think, you know, their role could be with the Colts. So again, a lot of content coming these next couple of days. I want to give you guys that shout out though, uh, before we jump into this, uh, again, very hectic next couple of days here with the Colts. And if you guys don't already, make sure you're following at Locked on Colts, at Jake Arthur NFL, and at Zach Hicks 2 all on Twitter. Also, subscribe to us on YouTube at Real Estate Podcast. We'd love your guys' range reviews, and we'll catch you guys back here tonight after the Colts selection.